Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation from International Math Olympiads 2019. So f is a function from integers to integers and f of f of x plus y equals f of 2x plus 2 times f of y. So x and y are integers and we're going to be solving for f. So let's go ahead and start by replacing x with x minus 1 and y with y plus 1. Now you might be questioning why we're doing this. There's obviously more than one way to approach this problem. But notice that this type of transformation or substitution will, rem will keep the left hand side unchanged. But we'll get something else for the right, right hand side. That's what is important. So let's go ahead and replace x with x plus 1 and y with y minus 1. I mean the other way around. So when you do this, the sum of x minus 1 and y plus 1, because 1 is going to cancel out, is still going to be x plus y. So we get the same thing on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, you have to replace x with this. So it's going to be 2x minus 2 and y will be replaced with y plus 1. Notice that two, when two things are equal to the same thing, then they are equal. So these two things must be equal. Make sense? In other words, f of 2x minus 2 plus 2 times f of y plus 1 is equal to f of 2x, which is the original equation, plus 2 times f of y. Great. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of manipulation on this equation because as is, it's kind of complicated. We have two variables, x and y, and our goal is to get a special relationship between uh, these sides. But for that, we need to replace one of the variables with a number. But before we do that, let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit. Let's put the x's together. and the y's together. Now we have the different variables on different sides, so that's good. Let's go ahead and factor out a 2, even though that's not super duper important, let's still do it. And then we're going to get a 2 on the outside. Now this difference is going to be significant, okay, f of y minus f of y plus 1. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to replace x with 0 on both sides. I mean, there's no x on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to replace x with 0. When I do that, the left-hand side is going to give me a constant. That's what's important. What happens to the right-hand side? Since we're not replacing y with anything, or you can say, hey, y is y, it's going to stay the same. Make sense? That's something that we often do with functional equations. Sometimes we replace x and y both with something. We can even do this, like replace x with y and y with x. You know, sometimes that helps. But in this case, I'm going to leave the y unchanged. Okay? When you replace x with 0, I get f of negative 2 minus f of 0 equals 2 times f of y minus f of y plus 1. I told you this difference is going to be significant. Let's go ahead and isolate it by dividing both sides by 2 and switching sides. So that's going to give us the following. Now first of all, we got to remember that our function is defined over z, or we're supposed to solve over z. Integers. So the left-hand side is kind of like a consecutive difference f of y and f of y plus 1, the difference between them, right? Right-hand side is made up of constants, therefore it is a constant. So let's go ahead and set it equal to c. So from here, hopefully you see what I see, you get an interesting equation. f of y minus f of y plus 1 equals c. And you know what that means if this function is defined over integers? This means that it's a linear function. I mean, you couldn't say that with with reals if the you know the domain and the range or codomain were real numbers, then it would be a different story, of course. But in this case, since we're defining it over the set of integers, which is this, 
we can safely say that, hey, f of y needs to be a linear function. So that's the first step in solving this problem. First, we identify the type of the problem. So our function is, I mean the type of the function. Our function is linear, and then we try to find the a and b values. How do you do that? By substitution, of course, right? What else could it be? Substitution is awesome, and we use it in so many different ways. So let's go ahead and plug this into the original functional equation. Since a and b are un uh, unknown, we have to determine those constants, right? If possible. So I'm going to evaluate f of x plus y first. Since it's easier, replace y with x plus y. That's going to be a times x plus y plus b. And then I'm going to apply the function one more time. So this time it's going to be f of a times x plus y plus b. And then on the right hand side, that's going to equal f of 2x, which is actually a times 2x, which is 2ax plus b. And f of y, we already know, it's a y plus b. Okay, so we got an equation like this, and we're going to apply f one more time here. f is just going to take the input, multiply by a, and add b. It's a linear function, that's how it works. So f is going to take this input, this is my input, multiply by a, the whole thing, and then add b to it. And then if you simplify this a little bit, 2x plus b plus 2ay plus 2b, or not 2b, right? <laughs> That's the joke I have to make, can't help it. And now we're going to go ahead and distribute. So here what I can do is put these two together, because they have a common factor, and they contain x and y, and I already have x plus y, so let's not distribute that. Let's just write this as a squared times x plus y, plus AB plus B, and then this one can be written as 2A times X plus Y plus 3B. Awesome. From here, what do we get? We have to compare the coefficients of X plus Y and the constants, because this is true for all X and Y values such that X and Y are integers, so A and B must be specific values that satisfy this. In other words, the coefficient of x plus y is a squared here, but that's also 2a. So a squared must equal 2a, which gives us a is 0 or a is 2. And then the constants, a, b plus b must equal 3b, which is the constant here. And then from here we get a, b equals 2b. And then if you go ahead and put everything on the same side, and then factor out a b, you get two things. Either b is 0 or a is 2. Great. Now let's take a look at the e each case here, starting with a equals 0. So if a is equal to 0, you probably noticed from this equation, all right, b also becomes 0. Because if you replace a with 0, you get 2b equals 0, so b equals 0. If a is equal to 2, this always works because notice that a is equal to 2 appears twice in both equations, so the intersection is good. And also, if a is 2, then 2b equals 2b. Of course, that's always true. So pretty much this tells you if a is 2, b can be anything. Or it can just be b. Okay, great. So we kind of got like two solutions here. Let's go ahead and write them down in terms of our function. So we said that f of y, and did I say what f of x is? No, not yet, but we'll talk about it in a little bit. I, we said that, okay, our function is linear, and then if a is 0, b is 0. So that means f of y is going to be 0. But this is identically 0 for all values of y. But of course, you can also write this as f of x is 0. Since uh, you can write f of x equals ax plus b from here. Make sense? So that's one of the solutions. And then the other solution is going to be coming from the second one. If a is equal to 2, then f of x becomes 2x plus b. Because remember, b can be anything. b is just an integer, right? Okay, awesome. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.